Salt marshes are amazing habitats that do so much for us. In Essex, we have 350 miles of coastline and salt marshes are an iconic part of it. Salt marshes do so much for us. They support an amazing biodiversity, including our amazing bird species. And they also act as a fish nursery area. They protect us from sea level rise and storm surges and help protect our coastal communities. They are also a nature-based solution to the climate crisis as they sequester and store carbon. On average, salt marshes can store two tonnes of carbon a year and lock it into the sediment for centuries. This makes salt marshes a key blue carbon habitat. Salt marshes face a number of threats, including sea level rise, pressures from developments and eutrophication. In the UK, we have lost around 85% of our salt marshes and are losing them at a rate of 100 hectares per year. They need our protection and they need to be restored. The Salt Marsh Restoration Project started in 2018 and was initially a collaboration between Essex Wildlife Trust and the Environment Agency. The concept and the application is simple enough. It's installing coir roll structures in selected salt marsh creeks and we're doing this to try and restore the salt marsh and also act as a defence for the sea walls. We secure the coir roll structures in these creeks with chestnut stakes and hessian rope and we're hoping that this will encourage sediment to accrete and also encourage vegetation to establish. So far we've been doing some basic fixed point photography and visual observations and the structures do seem to be doing this which is great news. This year we're in phase three of the project where we want to establish some success criteria and really quantify how successful these structures are. It's really important we collect this data as our ultimate aspiration is to scale up this restoration technique on a landscape scale. I'm Nicola Shearer, I'm the catchment coordinator for the Environment Agency and I cover the whole of Essex. Following the installation of the salt marsh structures, we're going to be continuing to work with Essex Wildlife Trust and the University of Essex to monitor how well these are being established, how well the vegetation is growing on them and whether or not the salt marsh is regenerating. And we'll do this in a number of different ways. We'll take uh, drone footage, LIDAR footage to see whether the ground level is uh, increasing, whether the sediment is accreting behind the structures, and we'll also look at vegetation uh, types on the structure to see how well they are establishing. The Environment Agency is really proud to have been able to work with this partnership project with the Wildlife Trust and now also to include the University of Essex, and we hope that we can do further projects like this in the future. A key part of the data collection this year is a collaboration between the University of Essex and today we are here on a field course where University of Essex students are helping us to collect some key data. I'm Dr Natalie Hicks, I'm a lecturer at the University of Essex and today we've brought some of our undergraduate students who study marine biology and biological sciences to one of our salt marsh locations. So they're taking part in, as part of their field course, understanding the role of the salt marsh and looking at the restoration efforts we've been putting in place here. So the Essex coastline is particularly important in terms of its salt marshes. Uh, many of them are being degraded over time and we know that they play a really important role not only for coastal defence and biodiversity but in mitigating against climate change. So today is the first day we've brought them out to have a look at collecting some of the data around the structures that we've put in place. Partnership working between Essex Wildlife Trust, the Environment Agency and the University of Essex is really key. And phase three of this project this year has been generously supported by the players of People's Postcode Lottery. Some of the key data that we're collecting is looking at the carbon content of the accreted sediment, looking at the vegetation establishment and also undertaking some drone survey work over the summer. The drone footage will help us take a wider scale assessment of the impacts of the structures on the salt marsh. 
We will bring all this data together in a project report and also put together a version one of a toolkit so us and other practitioners could look to expand this approach in their area.